Derivatives trading involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. So stressful. And the world's on fire. Good God. I can't look at this, guys. Like, my strategy is... You buy it, and you hope that you gotta get spotted. Yeah, but we all think you're crazy. You don't fight this. No way. The markets are freaking out, and you don't think that anything is wrong? Go back tomorrow, and I'll lose it all. Should be fun. Good morning, everybody. It is the 30th of June, last day of June. We kind of got an interesting setup. By the way, you'll notice we don't have that no uh, card thing, so we fixed all that. <laughs> Anyways, um, coming over into the charts, you just go right into it. Well, yesterday, actually, let's look at it from a footprint chart. So yesterday, we had a, a, a push down over here below 3,000. Excuse me. A little bit of absorption, 10,000 isn't a ton, but certainly enough to get us going. Then we came up here, and you notice in this 2720, or sorry, 3027 area, bit of resistance coming in. Then at the end of the day, and and kind of two things happened at the end of the day. One of them was Kudlow, and I think that, that Kudlow speaking was probably the thing that pushed him up. Not that he said anything particularly important, but... You know, they're going, uh, he's always doing the cheerleading. I think that they were a little disappointed with the market's performance of that day. Came up, uh, all everybody closing their positions out into the close. Um, I was talking about things like, uh, you know, they, they want more stimulus and, you know, same old, same old. So um, I think that this move right here is, is a little weak, this, this structure in through here. So you can see that they're already testing it. If we come back to this chart right here, you can you can see more clearly that yesterday's close, not able to hold it overnight, a little momentary push through it, and then failing again. Um, they may, like I said, they may try and push down to here. Well, I mean, they've already retraced it, so maybe not. But you can kind of see there, that's the technical setup. Um <clears throat> So take from that what you will. Uh, when I come back to these charts, some of like these volume profiles and stuff, okay, uh, you can see that here in the E-mini, we're in a pretty good down channel. So if we did get a sell-off and they decided to go for 3,000 again, you know, that could be significant. On the other hand, they could try and push above the Thursday highs at 30.81, that would be, you know, I think bulls would love that. Um, a couple of, uh, uh, but also something like really big deal is the, the treasuries continue to move up. So after all of that bullishness yesterday in the ES, I, I mean, I guess it was mildly bullish. But despite that, they continued to buy the treasuries the whole session. And going even into like after the E-mini close, buying in the treasuries. Overnight, a little quiet. And now here again this morning, buying. Uh, so something is going on in the E-mini, or sorry, in the 10-year treasury that, that we need to pay attention to for sure. Oil, oil had a okay yesterday, kind of doing the same thing as the E-mini. Gold, gold taking a hit this morning. In fact, when we come over here to currencies, you can see there's some dollar strength today, although... Reports I'm reading is that there's an expectation that there will be a lot of dollars selling as people rebalance their portfolios for the end of the month. Now, and this is the, the critical um, tech, sorry, fundamental backdrop that we've got going today that uh, I think could make today difficult trading <laughs> is that uh, there's been a lot of talk about end of month rebalancing. People saying that there's like five to ten billion dollars worth of portfolios that need to rebalance. Now, my thinking is, why the hell wouldn't you have done it on Friday? <laughs> like, I know that today is the last day of the month, but Friday you had what is usually the highest volume, the, the, the highest volume trading day of the year in the Russell rebalance. 
and you wouldn't use that to do your end of month rebalancing too. Uh, okay, but the treasuries still are still moving up. All right, so that's kind of what we're going to be looking at. Oh, so we got some news today. That will come in here. Um, nothing at six thirty, but we do have the Chicago PMI at nine forty-five Eastern time. Remember, 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 remember. The Chicago PMI is released to subscribers five minutes early. So be watching the tape, 940. That's when it's released. The the pro traders, they're gonna have that. Okay. Um, what else do we got? Oh, got a little bit of a sell in there. Actually, a pretty strong sell. That might be some news. Mm -mm. Oh, yeah, that is the news. So Canadian GDP, negative 11.6 versus negative 12.2. Moved them down. I wonder why they, they thought that was bearish. I mean, it wasn't as bad as expected. Actually, this one, they estimate, was negative 13, so it was actually a lot better than expected. And I think we also have, yeah, we got consumer confidence at 10 o'clock as well. So, so these two numbers are important. And then we have all of this other stuff going on. I think we may find that the beginning of today will be a little choppy, but uh, we'll see. Um, I guess one thing to say, though, is that this is a day where, um, you know, institutions need to make their moves. And so your technicals probably aren't going to be as effective today. The, re the retail traders aren't going to have much sway over this market because they're the, the pros are going to do what they got to do to, to meet the mandates set by their portfolios. Yeah. Make sense? Okay. So let's make sure uh, got everything set up here. Text to speech going. Cool. Well, those, my, uh, these treasuries, I don't think that they're giving me correct. Oh, maybe they are. Pretty narrow overnight range, but still higher. And look at them pushing through the iceberg at 13. Yeah, there's, there's definitely, there's definitely some, some real strength coming in here, but I don't know 100%. 100% what's causing it. Let's see here. Anybody saying anything? Let's see here. White House wants to give Americans a back to work at one is Yeah, well, giving giving them like some incentive to to come off the payrolls because right now they make more. Yeah, that's a problem. Try to warn people. We came to warn you. Mm-hmm. Winston's mom says, good morning, sanitizer, ready for today? No, I, I still have a hot pocket that I'm eating. So what? let's watch. We're, we're getting some more selling action in the E-mini. So I wonder now, they're going to push those lows and, and push below. The thing is, is that I, I feel that because that end of day rally, like, listen, end of the closing prices don't matter. If, if there's, I think that if there's any technical indicator, that is weak that that people believe works and absolutely doesn't it is things based on closing prices so you know we had yesterday's close around 3047 and this whole move from from about 3030 to 3047 that was caused by kudlo talking is is suspect and and is is a weak target so we'll see. They're gonna go for it. We'll see where they get to. Can't I, I? I I I could predict that they're probably going to make that test, but I can't predict if they're going to get below thirty thirty and hold. And quite frankly, the the fundamental setup here is such that that we have we know that people are are may have moves, but there's no way for us to calculate it. Um, I mean, lots of people are trying, but you know. They, can, they only know how much the portfolios will need to do. They don't know how much they've done to rebalance. So, 
So uh, we we just got to be on our toes because there there's a high possibility of uh, big guys coming in and doing stuff, but we don't really know what they're going to do. <laughs> but them selling like that is is uh, very interesting because I didn't really see anything in the can I don't really think Canadian GDP is a big deal. Uh, and I don't really see anything on Twitter. So, Oh, you know what? Two other things. So we got to talk about, um, before I start stuffing my face, the, um, Joe Biden yesterday coming out saying that, um, in, in a private, uh, meeting with donors that, you know, I'm going to rescind most of the Donald Trump tax cuts. And a lot of you guys aren't going to like that. Yeah. A lot of guys really aren't going to like that because, uh, you know what, uh, Jeez, like like my my own senator. To, so I know a lot about this because Orrin Hatch, he was on the finance committee and this was his thing. Like the reason that Orrin Hatch stayed in Congress for so long was because he wanted to pass that tax reform, particularly for corporations. And the way that the tax reform worked fundamentally changed the way that U.S. corporations were taxed and made them much more competitive globally. And we saw the first two years of Donald Trump's presidency tremendous amounts of money came into the u.s simply because of the change in the tax code so that's a significant change uh, that joe biden is proposing that business is not going to like so i think that that's a really important thing there was a lot of this talk like nothing is fundamentally going to change you can actually see when he, when he go on reddit and the shills they're they're already talking they're already picking up on that that oh Joe Biden said nothing fundamentally is going to change, but this says that he's right. Nothing is fundamentally going to change because we're going to change the tax law back, but it is a fundamental change from what it was. But I, I think the, the end result of this is going to be that people are going to say, oh, wow, he's totally willing to, he really is going to go along with the Democrat, um, you know, wish list of things. Um, and when you start looking at those, a lot, a lot of them are not good for the markets. Okay. Um, but we're also looking at this point where like Joe Biden's poll numbers are probably a little high. So I'm sure that it will come back at some point. They're always pendulum, always swinging. Um, so there was that, there's that story. Then the other story that's going on right now is that the Trump administration is under pressure from reports that. There was uh, that Russian uh, Russians were paying fighters in Afghanistan uh, a lot of money if they were able to kill a U.S. soldier. And um, there's a, a lot of back and forth about this. I would just sit and, and watch because, man, it, I'm like even even different sources are saying different things. So NBC is saying that Donald Trump wasn't briefed on it and the ap is saying that he was so it sounds like the ap has a source that that has an axe to grind and is saying one thing and the administration is saying some something else and people are just kind of believing who they want to believe it, just watch just watch something like this usually blows over but we will see right, so i'm just sitting here on the hill coming through right now National Security Advisor says Trump was not briefed on bounty intelligence and condemns leaks. It, it bothers me when you're using national security uh, uh, measures, you know, issues of national security for a political purpose to hurt the president. This is so dangerous to democracy, guys. This is so dangerous to our country. Uh, they, they need to find the people doing this and stop this shit. If it was Obama, it would be, a, I mean... I, if it was Obama, I probably would would feel upset that Obama is not protecting the United States. But th th even then, it, they shouldn't be leaking it. They they just shouldn't. Um. So yes. Yeah, so, so you may see the market react to some of that, but I would not jump to any conclusions. Okay. Right. Let me eat some food. That was a long intro. It's like 10, 10, 20 minutes of blabbing just there straight through. How are you guys doing this morning?
Sunday driver says you found our card. Your card? What are you talking about? I don't think I found... Oh, yes, that's yes. My father brought it back. He brought it back to me yesterday. Man. Now I'm looking... Now Now you can see that that this blemish on my forehead. It's funny how strongly those, those stand out on the camera. I gotta figure out what my deal is because... Like I have one, I had one here, I had one here, I have one here. This one won't, there's like nothing in it, it's just there. This one, there's, it's it's like, a, it's like an area, it was like really inflamed and infected, but you can't actually get anything out of it. It's so annoying. Yeah, you, you, you really care about, but that wasn't relevant to the, the comment that was, yes, we got, we got our card back. Need to, yeah. Anyways, in in addition to that, we did a bunch of stuff. On a, I don't know if you can really see it, but yeah, you can't really see it. I have stuff all over the floor because I was reorganizing some of our tech stuff. This monitor here on the left, um, the power cord on it is is acting finicky. I, I think I'm going to replace go it. to the dock. They'll get rid of it. I had a lipoma on my back once that I didn't even know I had. Oh yeah, that might, maybe that would do it. I need to go to a couple of doctors. Dude, so so can you tell me? I've I've been trying to figure this out. And I keep doing like Google searches, and I like I I just I don't even know where to start. But the the my elbow, like literally right there, there's like a chip in my elbow, and it's been there for years, like my whole adult life. But it's starting to hurt, and it's like a divot in my elbow. So I'm thinking like they need to like that in or something i mean like it should be a simple surgery right but i don't know what kind of winston's mom says to. those look like bug bites three might mean bed bugs but more likely they are fleas no it's it's a zit it's a zit. this one this one this one popped and it was just fine this one I, I don't know what the deal is with it it gets in that that kind of softer forehead skin and the, you know sometimes they just don't want to come out because there's no path through the port to the skin those are the ones that can get really bad. The thing that frustrates me is that if I leave it alone, then it'll just get hard and then it doesn't it doesn't go away basically. Hmm. Okay, so uh, another iceberg at 13 half. Five you came down. Winston's a bit. mom says, Do you have any tea tree oil? Tea tree oil? What? No. Sunday driver says arthroscopic surgery. You have bone pieces that are now intruding on soft tissue. Probably, right? I think that what's happened is that, like, as it's grown back, there's probably, like, little jaggedy bits of bone that are getting into it. Arthroscopic. Let's see her. All right. Small incision. Yeah, that's what we need to do. But how do you? Uh... No. Maybe I need to do elbow arthroscopic surgery. Oh, uh, look. There's a result. Elbow arthroscopy, Salt Lake City. This is good. I'm going to call him today. I'm going to call him today. See if, well, I have to see if they're in my uh, network, but probably he is because they're all, they're all, we only have one healthcare provider really here in Utah. <laughs> if you want to go to one of the other, if you want to go to one of the other insurance providers, it's like a real pain.
M says good morning. Black stocks are hot again. You say so. I'm sure stocks do lots of things that I'm not aware of. <laughs> you know, I never really saw yesterday. Let's go back and look. I, I never really saw much um, analysis of the rally yesterday in terms of like, who moved and stuff? M says NFLX allocating 2% towards black financial see, services. It's Oh, towards black financial services? You know, the, the whole thing with financial services in this country is a little messed up because some people, like, literally don't have any access to financial services. It is so, it is so awful. Like... M says carve BYFC. And then you've got, like, these things like, um, who was it? The people that made Gab? were cut off from from using visa like can you imagine if, if you couldn't use a visa if you couldn't use a visa card like what the heck how is that how is that allowed super crazy to me and but with a lot of african americans sunday it's... driver says allocating money based on race is going to create inefficient allocations of capital so perhaps that will create an opportunity uh maybe I mean, I think that the argument that the people that are investing based on that are making is that there's they're saying that there's an inefficiency and that people who are black aren't getting as who have a business and owned by somebody that's black aren't getting as much capital as they should, that they're underinvested on it. I, I don't know if that's true. You know, have to do the analysis, but that's their theory. I don't know. There's definitely, you know, oh, wait, hold on. I should finish eating before I go into this rant. I'm, I just, something that really bothers me, because I think I, I know a lot of people that, um, well, I shouldn't say I know a lot of people. I have a few friends on my Facebook that are black. And there's like, it's like the difference between these people, um, like I have one guy, he's really good. Um, well, he's a guy. He's married to a, to a, a white girl, but they have a couple of kids. She's actually pregnant again. I was I was kind of shocked and jealous. I was like, because they had a kid around the same time that we did. Now they're having another one. And I'm like, oh, I want, I want another one. But he's he's great. And and he, Sunday he, driver says I've worked in banking. Not true. Lenders just want to make money with a reduced risk. Uh, well, so the thing is, is that if you live in a neighborhood, there's not even a bank. So they don't, they don't actually have any practical way to access it. Um, anyways, um, so this guy, you know, of course, he does support Black Lives Matters and everything like that. But he's also like, you know, you should be responsible. These attacks on people are totally wrong. And you are, you are ultimately responsible for your destiny. I have these other people, though. And, and I wouldn't even say that it's just like that that it's because they're black or, or even that they support black lives matter. It's really the people that are like it, it's supporting like anarchists and communists and, and maybe not fully realizing that that's what they're supporting, but, but they are like far, far left. And oh my gosh, the shit that they post, it's like it, it actively makes you ignorant of how the economy works. Hold on. So, so I'll, I'll expand on that a bit, but I'll, I'll let you guys comment on that. Sunday driver says a woman I am friends with posted that Dollar General stores cause crime. Lol. The ignorance is through the charts sky high. All I know is that my wife and kids love the dollar store. <laughs> they love the dollar store.
Sunday driver says I love dollar stores, too. So let, let me give you the example that I was seeing yesterday. I had Sunday this Driver says, here's a tidbit. I think everyone mm -hmm. is trying to become a podcaster. It's almost impossible to find microphones suitable for podcasting. Oh, oh, oh there 100% is Sunday Driver. So this um, capture card that I have that I use for the web card. Web, blah, 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 blah. Um, why am I having trouble talking today? I need to like do some diction exercises or something. The The, the Elgato... 4K cam link capture card that I use to use my Canon with the OBS software. Um, I think I bought it. I like I was looking for a good deal. And I think I got it from somebody else for like 90 bucks or something like that, right? And people have been trying to sell these on eBay for like 500 bucks. And um Elgato didn't have any of them out there. Now I my understanding is that Elgato went and like ordered a huge reprint of the cards and like they've introduced a ton of new supply onto the market and that eventually it's supposed to to work its way out but oh yeah there people are absolutely Winston's trying mom to says do it, I yeah. don't care for dollar general overall but dollar stores are fun but not dollar general I don't even know what the ones I thought that um, the ones that were in my area were local, but I, I guess there are national chains. Gary Rich says if one views things via black, white, brown, yellow, you are institutionalized, individualized, plain vanilla moron. Yeah. Well, so let me tell you that here was the, the issue or m meme that I was arguing with somebody the, the other day is that they were, they were saying that, that capitalism had, uh, Sunday fooled Driver everybody. says I can't find the blue Yeti I want. Audio Technica, Rode, mm -hmm. Hypix. All are impossible to find. Even not online. I mean, that's something you should buy online. Don't get the HyperX. The roads are good. The roads are good, but really, if you're starting out, the easiest is the Blue Yeti. Winston's mom says, Gary Rich, good morning. There's another one. Who was it? Oh, Elgato. Elgato has a new microphone out, and it is really good. They have a new and everything that I've read about it says that this is like the Sunday new thing driver to get. says I've been looking online. Always sold out. They they might be sold out, but the the new ones, the new Elgato uh, microphone is probably your best best one to get right now. Sunday driver says I'd like to get the Blue Yeti Pro. Hmm. I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily go for the Pro. Like the the big advantage of the Pro is that it has an XLR mic thing, but it doesn't really change the quality of it. It's kind of, yeah, there's not much, there's, I don't think there's much point in it. Anyways, back, back to what we were, we were talking about. So here was the issue that I saw. They're saying capitalists have fooled everybody into thinking that China stole our jobs when it was really, they exported them all. And I was like, okay, yeah, but you realize that the reason that they were able to export all the jobs is because China artificially manipulates their currency and makes it so that doing business in China is cheaper than, than manufacturing over here, right? Like China had done, has done things that, that are explicitly against the trade agreements that have been made in the past. They cheat and they did. They stole jobs, 100%. I don't even think that at this point that that's like a, an arguable thing. I think that every everybody agrees that that China has done some pretty uh, underhanded things in regard to uh, international trade. Now their response was, "Well, the companies could still choose to just not export their jobs." It's like, uh, like, no. Because if their competitors do it, and their competitors are able to put out a cheaper product than them, you're just going to lose market share and go out of business, guys. Right? Like, I, I think that most of you guys understand that, that. That the way that China has been behaving, 
negatively impacted manufacturing in the United States. Um, but their, their whole thinking was just like, well, no, you should, you know, doesn't matter if you lose money on it. You should just do the right thing. It's like, it's, a, it's way more complicated than that, you know? But, but the thing that was so striking about it to me was that the opinion was, was essentially like, um, business is bad. And because I don't like the way that business is, I just shouldn't even get involved in it. Do you see how these, how people that, that get caught in the socialist or, or the communist mindset, it's like, it's like it keeps you poor. They want, I, I really think these, that some of these guys promoting this ideologies they want to keep you poor because if you were actually successful, you would go back and say, oh, no, no, actually, anybody can be successful if, if they try hard and they find value in the economy. And, and everybody in America has the opportunity to be able to do that. You just, you just have to continue working. And um, you know, maybe you need a little bit of, eventually, a little bit of luck will play a part of it, but eventually you're going to get lucky. And you don't have to be like, super super rich but you can certainly at least pull yourself out of poverty if you try and there's a lot of people especially in the african american community from the stats that, that we have right that that have picked this up and started to say oh yeah i can be successful in america i start a business and then what do they do they come along and they say oh no you shouldn't have small businesses and they destroy them all right it's like these these ideas are there to keep you poor and and it was I just it was so so stunning to me that somebody could be so willfully ignorant about how economics work. You know what I mean? Sunday driver says we let them get away with it. We allowed them into I think the WTO. Yeah, we shouldn't. Sunday have driver says libertarians are dumb. They act like China was doing us a favor because they sold us products at a lower price at their expense. Dumb. Yeah, oh man, you know what, Sunday driver? I I I I hate to admit it, but I 100% agree with you. I I am not a libertarian. I, one of the most common things that I that not the most common, but but something that I find myself saying on especially on Facebook a lot. Is people will say, "Oh, well, Republicans believe X, Y, and Z, and so why don't they believe A, B, and C?" And it's like, uh Republicans aren't libertarians, guys. <laughs> I guess I don't understand this. Winston's mom says the police synchronicity, meaningful coincidence. I like you, Gary Rich. Was that a song? Oh, by the way, while I'm thinking about it, Gary, Gary sent me a, a uh, where did you get that from? He sent me a PDF that was, I thought it was maybe a book, but it wasn't a book. It was, uh, it was a, an overview of like, 15 to 30 books that this guy thought were good trading books. Um, it was interesting. I know I, I need to look through it again. Cause I don't know what was on that list that would, that really hits what I want, but a lot of it was just trading <laughs> and I'm still, I'm still of the mind that like when it comes down to like, okay, here's a technical analysis and how you use it and stuff. It's like, I'm just not interested in the technical analysis right now. If you're going to give me something with technical analysis, it needs to be something really complicated. But what do we let's let's not get into that right now. There's those other things to talk about. Um What was that with the Oh yeah. I don't know why, but all of that made me think about the all of the social media censor censorship yesterday have you guys have you guys heard a lot about that <laughs> off to drive off to another zoom meeting all right it's like see you later sunday sunday driver says off to just another fucking zoom meeting see you later i was i was looking at some of the guys because one of the guys that got banned was was stefan molyneux and i wasn't necessarily like a huge fan of his um because he was constantly talking about stuff that I just don't find interesting. Like, like one of the things that he he made an episode about was 
the um evidence out there about um IQ differences between different races. And and I've read about this before, but as far as I can tell, um there's there is a lot of debate over over this and not a lot of research on it. And so uh, um he was going through all of this and every time that I see that I'm my immediate thought is oh yeah, this is that Richard Spencer stuff. This is what those those crypto Nazis are are always pushing. So so he was pushing that sort of stuff, but his channel was always very much like here is all the facts and I'm going to lay it out for you and you and and he was very good at that. I thought that he was very fair and another thing that I liked about him was that he was always he was always hey don't fall into the extremist violence sort of a thing because that is something that has definitely been happening. It's like a lot of people I'm seeing are getting Winston into Slum like says, Sunday driver zoom zoom may there be alpacas at your zoom may there be <laughs> but um there i see a lot of people saying oh we should have a civil war and kill all kill all cops and things over over really trivial like i just i just don't think that you sit down and you say oh okay because um a black guy got killed by the cops and now they're prosecuting those cops for potentially murder that that means that we should kill all cops that's like, okay, that's extremist nonsense. And they're, they're, uh, or you see somebody that's pushing that sort of stuff. They're, they're pushing violence over where it's not needed, frankly. And, uh, well, I mean, violence is almost never really the solution. Um, especially in American society, because we have an effective political system that, that allows us to deal with issues without having to resort to violence. Okay. Um, but Stefan never fell into that trap. He always, always, always was saying, don't be violent guys. Always, no matter what, hundred percent. And then YouTube banned him for promoting hate and stuff. Like what, what is it? it give me one example of something that he, he, he posted that was promoting hate facts. You'll post facts. Sure. But promoting hate. No. I have to say, I don't think I'm next. I think Wall Street Bets is next. You go and you read that subreddit. There's a lot of, uh, they call Uzi people Knesset gay. Says it's because and, Stefan often discussed the bell curve. Yeah. Yeah, he was, he was talking about, uh, you know, like I was saying, they, he, he seemed to be interested in the subject of if there was IQ differences between races, which... I think is is a silly subject because w when you look at IQ, the differences within any one demographic group are going to be so significant. Uzi Knesset says race and IQ is a verboten topic. Yeah, it's well, it's just like trading. Okay, like if I look at trading and I've got a bell curve, right? I can I can look at something for a bell curve. It doesn't really help you in trading because. You might know what the average is and what the probabilities are, but it tells you absolutely nothing about what this one particular instance that we're looking at is going to be like. And it's the same thing. Like you have you have a bell curve. The differences between people, even within you know within a whole race, are so significant that on an individual basis, the bell curve it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all, and it's completely useless in terms of making any kind of policy. Uh, I guess it's interesting for scientific reasons because you'd want to know, okay, maybe what are some genes and, and things like that. But I don't even think that we know enough about IQ tests and Uzi Knesset says what I don't matters he was to them. so much a proponent of it, just often discussed it in. Yeah. If it were true, humanist solutions to correcting it. Yeah, maybe. I mean, one of the things is, is that the, the argument is, is that um, we don't know if our IQ tests are really effective enough to be able to tell us something like that. And I think that they're probably right. So when I look at IQ tests and I, I read about how they work, it seems to me that just knowing how the IQ test would work or being within a certain culture would make a significant difference in how you ended up performing on it. Because the way that you, uh, well, let, let me put it this way. We, we say that IQ is is not variable. That's true that your IQ tends not to change, but that doesn't mean that it's like 100% determined by genetics, right? What what you do as a kid in particular makes a significant difference into 
Uzi which, Knesset says what's happening you know, online now is a purge of anything that can be related to Trump. They're trying to demoralize his online base to change the outcome of the election. I, I think so. I don't think it's going to work, though. I mean, man, they've got they've got their own website on the Donald.win and they're pulling more people into it. And I, if I was Reddit, I would be concerned. Because this is always how it starts, right? Is that the new platform comes out and the reason that people like the new platform is because they can access edgy content that they can't get elsewhere. Uzi Knesset says, yeah, it may not. But the fact that they're trying it all is a bit scary. It is a bit scary. So I was going to say, uh, when you go to Wall Street Bets, it's really common to call call people like gay bears and autistic. There's a lot of insensitivity in there. And I don't think that it um, is necessarily thought of as this way by the majority of the participants. But I think that it was very much started as a right wing kind of you know, screw political correctness view on on the markets and stuff. And I think it kind of started as a right wing thing. And, and now it's gained more mainstream popularity, but the culture has remained that way. And it is very much in the same vein as a lot of the things that they've been cracking down on, particularly on Reddit. So I think Oh, you know what? They're Uzi a little Knesset bit bigger. Says it's like I told some friends of mine. When the authorities go from telling you not to go outside because you can die to go outside and protest racial injustice solely based on politics. Yeah. Well, I, it's, it's... Uzi Knesset says should it should fucking you. scare you. Yeah. And, and oh, wow, the way that she said that. Wow. Wait. Uzi Knesset says it should fucking scare you. Must be the dot 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 at the end of it that she wrote the end. That's so. Tell you what, sometimes that that text to speech thing is really uh, uh, amazing. No, so I say Wall Street bets is next, but then after they take out guys like that, I'm on the chopping block. I think, I think that if I was popular, if I had like a million subscribers and everything like that. They'd absolutely try and take me out. No question about it. No question about it. And and it scares me because at, at this point, you can you can demonetize anybody, and there's nobody's going to do anything about it. Like seriously, your your only option now is to go to a different website, and especially for video, I I just don't see the platform. I know that there's bit shoot, but. It's, it's just not a replacement for YouTube yet. It, it really isn't. Uzi Knesset says it's basically the equivalent of changing your opinion on the effects of diving into a fucking active volcano just based on political ideologies. Right. Well, the thing that I think is funny about it is that they, well, you know, I don't know if they think of it that way or not. I think the people that are doing this have a particular ideology. And they say, under our ideology, these are the types of behavior or um, content that are harmful to society, and we should uh, not allow that content on our platform. I think I think that they're being honest about it. It's just that that some of the things that their ideologies say about what is okay and what is not are insane. Like if you read these new rules on Reddit, they're like, okay, like we should. Um, people are people and we shouldn't promulgate hate or violence um, towards, you know, uh, vulnerable or minority groups. They have to include vulnerable because that would be women, because women are actually a majority in the country, right? So you have to say women are vulnerable and that's why they're protected, right? But then it, they also say at the end, they specifically say, but it doesn't, this doesn't um, apply to all groups. So basically, the the gist of it was you can hate and promote violence against straight white males on Reddit, but you can't against minorities and women and stuff. Which it shouldn't. Which it should just be says, none well, at all. Take a quick second to hit like. Thanks, thumbs up. Uzi Knesset says hate or violence is yeah. fine only for white men though. 
people really miss the fact that this is how you create white supremacists. Well, and the thing is, is that I think the reason that they put that in there, or they had to put that in there, was so that all the Antifa subreddits could continue to go on, right? Because the Antifa subreddits were basically like, you know, kill all Republicans <laughs> based on based on the opinion that that their uh, Republicans are promulgating hate by Uzi not Knesset joining the movement. Exactly. It's or you know that all Republicans are fascists. This is this is the insanity that's going on. So they they kind of they give this little this little opening, right? And then they make it so that they can they can just tear it into this huge thing. And now all of a sudden it's okay to just hate anybody as long as it's in line with a certain political ideology. It's crazy. It's crazy stuff. I I can't believe that they don't see the problem with this. Because it's not just a problem, like from an ideological perspective, that like, hey, like we should, we just shouldn't promulgate hate and violence against anybody. Like I personally, I think Richard Spencer is a shitbag, but I'm not going to tell you guys to go out and punch him in the face. It's not okay. That's not the way that we do things in our society. Maybe there are times when like revolution and violence is necessary, but we are not anywhere remotely close to that. All right. And uh, what you're going to do is you're going to turn your, your website into a shithole. I'm telling you guys, listen, I've been through this. I feel like the donkey in uh, Animal Farm where he's sitting there and like he knows what's going to happen, but he's not going to do anything about it. We live in a world where the political ideology that dominates all media, all academia, and all major corporations are telling the guy who says, I don't agree, that he's the fascist. Right. Because I feel like it doesn't matter what you do that people are so stupid they're just going to play it out over and over again right but i've seen this happen on communities where um when the the more liberally minded people kind of get in charge and um start to to you know they'll promote hate and and it's okay to be really mean and edgy about x thing but not about y thing and I'm telling you, it kills websites. Nobody, because that content just isn't interesting. It's interesting to that, like that one guy that, that is like super radical. But then once he doesn't have anybody to fight with anymore, it's not interesting to him. So you chase everybody else away. And then when everybody else has been chased away, the people that are left get bored. That's what's going to happen to Reddit. 100%. I've seen it so many, so many times, guys. This is what killed web forums. This is why Reddit was interesting to begin with because the the web forums weren't interesting anymore because they had become so sterilized. Well, that and it was so segmented too, but it's going to kill it's going to kill it. Same with Twitter. Now now that um what what is it called? The, I opened it up. You guys, you can follow me on it now. What, what, uh, their new, uh, more conservative Twitter. Uh, what's it called? I think it starts with like an R. No. R, P. It was, starts with a P, huh? Uzi Knesset R says being on the internet in general has become overrated. It's time to pack it in if you ask me. E-Trader says, well, Seth, if you run for president, I'll vote for you. No, I don't think I'll ever run for office. Uzi Knesset says use it only for questions you can't answer off the top of your head, lol. Parlor, parlor. you can follow me on Parlor, just at Speculator Seth, just like my, my handle everywhere else. Yeah, I don't think I'll ever run for office, because here's the thing. When I was in school, I was very much into politics. You know what? It might have been a good career for me. I probably would be making more money than I make now if I had decided to go into data analytics and politics i there's some good money in that you know what i mean and i and i feel like i have a pretty good feel for how politics works so i i think i would be good at it but i sat down and i looked at the way that the world worked and having gone through the stock market i realized that politicians in our society really can't accomplish much of anything anymore they are complete slaves to uh whatever the loudest mob of their constituents tell them to do they have no real power 
all of the the important decisions in this country are made by small business orders owners and and that's really the way that it should be and uh that was where i realized like if i wanted to make an impact on the world it it i was better off doing it in business understanding business and so i even though i'm still interested in the politics and i totally go the the uh you know helping people understand what's going on and everything. I didn't, I didn't base my life or my career on it because, and there's consequences to that, right? One of, one of them was that I, I said, look, if I'm not going to run for office or do any of that, I can say what I want. So I say what I want. Um, does that mean potentially if I ran for office, somebody could go and watch through the thousands of hours <laughs> of uh of content that we have on this video and probably take something that i've said out of context or maybe something that i said where you know at that time it didn't really seem like bad but in in the end it, it was not the smartest thing to say probably probably you could find something so how effective would it be for me to run to run for congress i don't know i don't know Gary Rich says Pell to speak to Congress soon. Get ready for turns and rotations. Yeah, um, that's not till like 10.30, right? Yeah. 10.30 my time, 12.30 Eastern time. We still, I mean, the next thing is the Chicago PMI and then the consumer confidence. Remember that the PMI gets released five minutes early. I think until that happens. I mean, you notice here the market has been relatively constrained. So... There's, there's a lot of fundamentals that are going to hit this market. But I think you're right, Gary. I think today is going to be like, woo. Woo. Gary Rich says, well, welcome Rip Van Winkle on the politics of politics. All are slaves to politics. Watch that say what you want statement. You are at risk to get canceled by the mob. Right. E-Trader says FOMC today. Well, I, you know, that's where I'm saying that, like, look. If I was popular, I'm sure that the the mob would already come after me, just because I'm just because I'm Republican, frankly. Just like honestly, in in the the environment that we have today, just being a conservative voice and being a, an effective voice that is convincing to people is a big enough sin. So if I was popular, that would be an indication that that my message and what I do was. Um, you know, uh, what is the word getting through to people and was effective. And so there would be people that would be trying to get rid of me. There's already, there's already even not being popular. There's people that have decided to make it their life mission to, um, make life difficult for me. It's, it's just absolutely crazy, but look, man, that's, that's me. I don't give a fuck what people think. I am, I am overly analytical i the emotional aspect is my my emotions are like deadened and that you know the sorts of things where people try and bully you and shame you and things has it, it just doesn't get to me it just doesn't it's annoying but some people are like oh everybody hates me they want to cancel i'm like who cares to me to me that like i revel in that I love it when people are pissed off about what I say, because that means that it was, it was, it was effective, right? Gary Rich says, yeah, you better care what you say. You need your job and can get canceled. Yeah. Well, I mean, now the, the split side of that is that I'm, I don't sit down and I say, say things that are, that are clearly dumb. Okay. Like the things that everybody would agree. You shouldn't say that that was offensive. Whatever. I, I don't think I've ever done that. I'm I I I'm pretty cognizant of like where the lines are in society and and what are you know I I myself I think particularly because I was raised Mormon and like we don't even swear although somehow I picked up swearing and I don't know how um you know that there's they're very much about you know be careful about what you say so. 
anyways um but but to to something that Uzi was saying earlier that it was like being on the internet in general has become overrated. I totally agree with that statement, man. Like I remember no, a couple of years ago. I don't want to say that it was like the peak of this was before Donald Trump's presidency, but maybe it was. But it used to be that it was like, hey, you know, what you see on social media isn't real, right? What you see is only like the the best parts of people's lives. And um, there was a lot of discussion about how it's negative to see what other people are doing and be trying to one up people and to try and keep the social media game going because like you'll get likes and then you want your next post to have more likes and, and that that's really negative to people's psyche. I, I don't think that that was a trap that I personally had problems with, but I get it. And I know why some people have problems with that sort of a thing that like you get on, social media and it's like everything is just like dopamine inducing life is so great sort of thing right it is not like that now when i get on my facebook it's like guys all you guys do is post depressing shit and and promote communism like it's either they're promoting communism or the conservative people as much as i as i usually tend to agree with them on issues they're always pushing dumb stuff like right now, the people on my cons the the most conservative people on my circles are pushing this, you know, um, masks don't do anything, which is just d demonstrably false. Okay, there's been like at least three studies and studies that you can do at home and and confirm for yourself to show that the masks do prevent droplets and reduce the amount of transmission. Obviously, it's not perfect. But it reduces the transmission of coronavirus. And they're all saying it doesn't do anything. And they're so focused on this thing like the masks. Pick and choose your your battles, guys. Masks is not is not the thing to push. You know? Yeah, I agree. Shouldn't be law to wear the mask, but we should be encouraging people to do it. I just you know. But that is that is freaking Facebook right now, and then the rest of it is depressing stuff. It's not like hey, like like I have you know baby, that's like what Facebook is for, man, is so that I can take pictures of my kid and all the people that can't be here with me every day can can see what is like with our new child. I maybe I should be posting more pictures like that, but jeez. It's not, it's not anything like it. And I get online now. Like when I go on Reddit, I, I'll go and troll the, the trading forums and stuff. But it's just not interesting content on there anymore, man. It's just, it's just not fun anymore. Gary Rich says at times I feel like the only man on an island surrounded by an ocean of shish. It's arrogant for me to say that, I, but that's my intention. But see, everybody feels that way, right? They've they've moderated it and and set the incentives on social media in a way and such that nobody enjoys it anymore. The only places that people enjoy it are when the really politically charged people are sharing memes amongst themselves. So this is the only people that have fun anymore on the internet, guys. And us, of course, we have fun. This is fun. Maybe, maybe part of it is that streaming is just so much fun that older forms of social media like Facebook or just aren't interesting in comparison. <laughs> Although the streaming, the whole streaming world is going through that. Oh my gosh! I know. I mean, we should. I we shouldn't get started on that because I know like literally nothing about what's going on. But apparently, everybody on Twitch is is a serial abuser of some sort and oh it's just a huge huge mess over there gary rich says 99.99 percent .99 of social media is just an orgasmic orgy of fun 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 maybe it's maybe it's the way that um what it decides to show me because i i don't see fun stuff on facebook anymore and when I go on Instagram, like Instagram art pictures, 
of people, but I don't really find those pictures interesting. One of one of the problems is that I think that the way that it's become kind of promotes really basic content. You Uzi Knesset says, "Wait until influencer culture collapses. Biggest mental health crisis in generations will come." Yeah, probably. Well, it's happening right now, right? Like, yeah. You know, so one of the things on on this Twitch thing that there was coming out was that they revealed that many of the big streamers that were doing charity streams were being paid to do the charity stream. They only did the charity stream because the charity paid them a ton of money to do it. Right. There has been so much money thrown at video and streaming in particular that was unjustified. Okay. Like these guys are not putting per together a professional and wide, um, a professional product with enough widespread appeal to be worth what, what they're getting paid right now. And uh, it's collapsing and because the money's gone and you're going to see the same thing on Instagram. So you have all of these Instagram models and the amount Very of Rich money available for them. I don't say that. I like the butt models and cartel ladies shooting guns on Instagram. The, the number of models is like this and the amount of money that's avail available for them now is like, Tiny. So you have all these models. I mean, because I, I know what it's like because I went through this with with DJing when I started DJing, man, like two thousand and eight. Um, it was like Uzi Knesset says tongue out. The first the first party that I went to, it, it was all vinyl. They were all spinning vinyl, and it was basically like if you weren't spinning on vinyl, the promoters weren't interested in you. And that was the turning point right then, because then the next party, they were there, you know, promoters were saying, well, you know, maybe we'll allow, we'll allow CDJs, of course. But then when they started, uh, then it was all. Gary Rich says, uh, sorry, Seth, some of those Instagram models are making bank. Anyways, so you came into this spot where it was like, okay, if you're the DJ and, and you're playing the main event and you can get paid and, and you can do that and you can play a club every weekend and you can make a, a reasonable amount of money with it, but not certainly not a full career, but it's a good hobby, right? But then all of a sudden, because it had been opened up into the digital sphere and there wasn't any kind of uh, barrier of entry based on the gear, the number of DJs out there compared to the number of gigs just like exploded, you know, and, and it became very hard to get uh, consistent gigs. And the Instagram models are going to run into that there and probably they haven't even felt the real pain of it. It's going to go through. It's going to be just like in YouTube, right? So with YouTube, there was a time at the very beginning where it was like almost anybody that came in and started doing something even remotely uh, professional on YouTube could come and be successful, right? Like a lot of the people that were making bank on YouTube in the early days were literally people just like this, where it was like they'd have a webcam and they just would just say their thoughts about a particular thing. Like Jenna Marbles is a really good example, right? She just would have a webcam and she'd splice it up. And it wasn't even a good camera when she started, right? This is a better camera than what most of those people had. And now it's like to be really successful on YouTube, you've got to have like really good quality audio and you have to have really good, you know, I've put a decent amount into our stream because you guys have been so great and we have made some money from advertising. Here's the open. So we put it back into it, but... RJ you know. Wheel says Jenna. Oh yeah, and Jenna is gone. She got canceled, didn't she? Um well she canceled herself. <clears throat> I digress. It's totally different. And what one of the things that happened in the halfway through that point was that there was a when there was the recession, in particular, when there was the 2008 recession, there was a realigning because people couldn't afford to do the advertising. And then there was another realigning when a bunch of advertisers were complaining about things on YouTube and there was the ad apocalypse. And after something like that happens, like the industry changes, this is it going to be the same with Instagram models? You'll, have, you'll still have stragglers that continue to post stuff, but I already see it happening. The, the top people, of course, will continue to make money, but they won't make as much money as they used to.
Uzi Knesset says Jenna Marbles, Shane Dawson, Dr. Disrespect, Jeffree Star, lol all these people have closets filled with skeletons haha. Now that I've been following the Dr. Disrespect thing and that, to, to me is so crazy that, that Twitch came out. So here's what happened with Dr. Disrespect. When, while we're watching the open here, it looks like so far there was a strong sell on the open, but the buyers are pushing price more. So I, I don't necessarily care too much. We got 10 minutes. We can keep labbing for 10 more minutes and then we got to focus. Okay, guys. So Dr. Disrespect gets, um, you know, he's got skeleton. Yeah, this is a guy that like, you know, his whole persona is being like ultra macho and kind of a little crazy. And yeah, he he like cheated on his wife once and that kind of became a public thing. Um, I'm sure that he's got many skeletons in his closet. And um, over the weekend, Twitch banned him. They did it on a Friday. It was totally like a Friday news drop. Do it when nobody's paying attention sort of a thing. Uh, they banned him from Twitch. This is like their most popular creator, by the way. Dr. Disrespect. Uh, they banned him and they didn't say why. So why? And, and they even like refunded all of his subscribers. It was things that they had never done with other people before. So everybody's wondering, why did he get banned? Did he get canceled? Did he say something like bad about Black Lives Matter? Did he, is he involved in some of this, you know, uh, sexual abuse kind of stuff? That, because that's everybody on Twitch has been talking about that and accusing different creators of doing stuff like that. Did it have something to do with when he cheated on his wife? Because there was this whole thing about he got together with another streamer at TwitchCon. But, but they didn't say. And then, um, so everybody is speculating, and then Dr. Disrespect comes out. So we're like, okay, now Dr. Disrespect's going to talk. Maybe we can see what happened. By the way, pretty strong stop run there on the upside at 45. Um, he comes out, and he says, Twitch hasn't told me why I got banned. <laughs> So we still don't know why he got banned. And oh, there's all these people running around saying, well, I know what happened, like that it's some sort of secret, but because of legal issues, they can't say. Maybe they, maybe they know, maybe they don't. But it's just crazy to me that it has been three days, four days now, and nobody has leaked what it is. Like, what the heck? It's either something really, really bad or something not really that bad and nobody's actually saying anything. Anyways, it was just crazy. Yeah, it, and a lot of people assume that it's been that it's like a me too or because he's we don't actually know why, so we shouldn't jump to conclusions on that one. But a lot of people are presenting it like he's getting canceled. So that's that thing. Kind of interesting. I don't know those other people, Shane Dawson and Jeffrey Star, don't know who they are. Okay, well, that initial pivot on the upside had some real strong stop run type behavior going in on it, but the overall cumulative delta continues to be negative. So this is a weird open. RJ Wheel says Shane. Ex survivor player. He's pretty outspoken. Mm. Mm. Oh, your says two party extremism is dropping all logic. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There was some real, on that upside, there was some real stop runs, but then I still see people selling it. So that's kind of interesting to me. Okay, so there's another push higher. I wonder, maybe, maybe they're front running the PMI.
Okay, so now they're about to make a new high in cumulative delta. So I'm wondering if they make another push, if this next push is actually could end up being really, really hard. But they're they're at yesterday's close now, so this is also the kind of the technical level that a a technical level that might uh, try and hold. Today, I announced my endorsement of Joe Biden for president of the United States in order to protect myself from racist Democrats, says Scott Adams. Uh, Rand Squawk tweets, Powell, economy entered important new phase sooner than expected recent data offers positive signs. AIS, banks... C banks need to discuss exit from crisis fighting measures as soon as oh, central banks need to discuss exit from crisis fighting measures as soon as circumstances allow. And then Schnibbelbell says data starting to look better when situation calms ECB will reduce PEPP. Mm. So he's saying the conversation has already begun. In other words, that the, the discussion that, okay, maybe we need to pull back these me measures now is is actually starting to become serious. I kind of think that I, because I've been thinking, hey, this must not be necessary for a long, long time, huh? Okay, so we got two minutes. Getting some absorption now at the 49 area. Dollar setting selling is flowing. Oh, um, yep, I do see it. The, the, the 6E and the 6J are both moving, driving us higher. Gary Rich says YM just can't get above 25, 714 five times they've tried to drive it upward. Well, look at, look at the uh, absorption here. So they they definitely made like a strong initial push higher, but now that we're at the around yesterday's close, you can see a distribution forming. So some people are just taking profits off of it, or maybe even fading that. But then we've got in a minute here we've got the PMI news. So uh, kind of what I see here is I I think that there are is appears to me to be some people. Um, not aware that this is about to come through. <laughs> this uh, this PMI could move them. If it, well, especially if the PMI comes out and it's bad, like like if we see a little move up in the treasuries, I think that we should just turn around and sell it. Well, I'm I'm still not going to make any trades this week. I mean, we could if we want. I guess I guess we're okay. What do you guys think? I think this could be a good opportunity. So if, if we see something, let's look a lot. Right now, the probability is it's going to be good, huh? I mean, there's a pretty strong buying going into it. But I'm just seeing if it's like right here. Okay, so there's the, the news. Oh, I didn't, didn't really see a reaction. Equities are coming down a little bit. Because, and the treasury maybe bid. Hmm. Did I get it wrong? Did I get something wrong here? Is it 10 minutes, not five minutes? Three minutes before public release. Ah. Trader Josh says 945. No, Josh, the Chicago PMI is released to subscribers three minutes before the public. 
So we're going to get the number at, so I thought it was five minutes. I'm, I apologize. It's three minutes. So we're going to get it here at 42. Trader Josh says, ooh, okay. Yeah. That's the one always trips people up. And it, and it looks to me like that, that that's what's happening. Because uh, there's, all, there's all this position taking up here at, 30, at 49. RJ you mentioned Wheel says another trade to BWAP that worked on YM. That also was major retrace area, Gary. Dude, if this, if this thing, uh, if this PMI number is bad, this is going to like just get destroyed. Ba-boom. Okay. So the number must have been bad. Probably could have had that a little closer. Probably could have had that at 47, but. Woo. So the way that they're kind of behaving around this says to me that the number was probably bad, but not super bad. Okay, well, we got about 30 seconds. Rob Coons says, hey, Seth, like what you're doing here. I've been tuning in over the past Thank few you. days. Thanks for the heads up on Chicago PMI. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. That, that one has caught me off guard so many times now. I just, it's like ingrained into my skull. That number always gets released early. Uh, okay, so. Now, now it's coming out. It was bad. 36 spot 6 versus an estimated 45. market is kind of churning still so it looks to me like after the initial news selling and everything like that and then a lot of retail traders probably being caught off guard that they still want to be long but let's see let's let it play out they might just need time Okay, so at the top of the hour, we got consumer confidence. The consumer confidence number is an estimated 91 spot 8. The previous of 86 spot 6. So I don't know if that, that number is going to be that high. 
Well, <clears throat> if this doesn't work out, I have to say I, I thought it was a good setup and probably the best setup that we could have had, but uh, sometimes I guess it just doesn't work out. I don't know though, I'm not really seeing a move in the cumulative delta at the moment. Just a lot of sideways trade. So. Probably, probably there's a lot of people that are confused here. Yeah, okay. Very well. Actually got 11 on it, so we didn't really get the MFB that we would have really liked off of a move like that. Gary Rich says S3066 they may raid up there and reverse it, gonna get short at 3045 if it gets there. Hmm. So let's come over here and look at our VIX and everything. So it was a pretty good uh, stop run into that high liquidity area be around 3052. Uh, upside is around 3069, let's call it Okay. Well, after that, now they're falling down and back into some levels where I was, you know, looking for them to take. So I'm going to try a tepid one. No, I didn't think that I had enough momentum on it for that on that one. see that this sucks that's not that's not what you want to have happen i guess we should wait for the consumer confidence number now so it looks pretty uh how do we say oh well, it's choppy i mean there's a lot of volume going through here We still look somewhat elevated. There's also still this uh, dollar weakness coming in. That that could be a counterflow to the setup that that we wanted that make it hard. Okay. Man, I'm just picking bad prices, aren't I? Oh, that was better. And now there's absorption at 42.
So I think what might be happening here is that Gary Rich says they know shit on picking bad prices. Lol. Yeah. I, I think that the, the fundamentals and everything here that I'm using are a little too obvious. Right? Like, it seems like it's too obvious that it should go down, and so they're they're doing a lot of stopping people out first. And notice the way that they're doing it too is like um, they have a strong push down, but then it pulls back really quickly. see here. Oh, we still got plenty of time. Time's going by so slow now all of a sudden. Damn it. Yeah, bad. You know, that, that one wasn't terrible, but really shouldn't be doing that to us. We've picked a good spot. Yes, I guess it can, but I would prefer not to do that, you know? Also, no, I should also note that the cumulative delta continues to be negative. So the positioning is not necessarily in our favor. We're a little crowded. We're a little crowded and the bulls don't seem to care. So of course they come up now. Okay, so now I really should wait for the consumer confidence number. I think some of that has just been Having not clicked on anything in a week, you're going to be a little rusty. And I might still be off, so. So I seem to be, I seem to be really disappointed by those two.
Chicago PMI Gary Rich says the S is just above years. its 200 SMA, holding a technical bounce. Oh, really? Let me put that. I have that on my chart, though. Let me redirect. Ah. 30.19. They say that PMI was the biggest miss in five years. And the market is brushing it off. Hmm. Well, there's always consumer confidence, but I don't know what the number that they're looking for. 91 spot eight uh, seems a little high to me. See, I think that 47 would be what I want. RJ Wheel says, so fundamentally, wouldn't you be loading shorts? Totally. Uh, well, so I think we're, in a, we're having a little bit of a weird action, though. Because the positioning was definitely going long into the news, and the longs definitely puked. But then it kind of created this counter move that when it pushed up into new high and triggered everybody's stops too. So I think that in the longer run that the market should go down, if not just be muted, because maybe there are some other bullish things that cancel it out. But, but yeah, I think it favors the shorts, absolutely. It favors the shorts, but it's hard to get into. Because RJ of, Wheel says I'm presently TA short on YM. Um, you know, because of positioning, it's it's looks hard to hold, right? And I, I think for me, I should wait until the consumer confidence number. RJ Wheel says I'm waiting. <laughs> 30 seconds. Ten, five, three, two, one. Okay. So they're buying on that. I haven't gotten the number quite yet. Thirty seconds. Come on, what's the deal? Oh, ninety-eight spot one versus ninety-one spot four. Wow, how does it? How is it ninety-eight? Mm. Okay. Well, the consumer confidence number is potentially more significant than the Chicago PMI, but. Gary Rich says, let's see if they punch at 3,066 or just rate it.
Oh, something's going on. Because they are not they are not getting the volume that they want. Like look, they moved up, cumulative delta barely unchanged. Chasing. Fuck. That was bad. That was bad, bad, bad. Now reloading right here in a big order. RJ Wheel says my number for ES if they collapse it. 3017. So this is interesting. The futures traders are selling it, but the index continues to move up. It's not the first time that I've ever seen this, but... Gary Rich says YM25,429 short of it gets there. Hmm. This is also a pretty wide range. And I keep trying to take it on the momentum and then it, it, the momentum stops. Uh... Hmm. RJ Wheel says 25,302 and 217 are the targets, Gary. Well, 3070. Oh, you're talking about something completely different. Gary Rich says YM25, 702 areas of raids. There was a lot of trade at 
<laughs> Zero Hedge Consumer confi Confidence rebounds in June, led by Hope. <clears throat> How do they how do they get that? Both current and future expectations surge. Biggest gainer here was Hope, which is back at its February 2020 highs, while the current conditions and headline confidence remain seriously low compared to February's normal. Gary Rich says at RJ that's right at 50% retracement of the one-hour highs or raids. This market doesn't look very balanced to me. So that stop run was really strong. And they're not above the overnight high yet. What was it? Well, now the last pivot is 3055. <clears throat> so I'm just thinking here, is the good consumer confidence number more important? I think it it might be. The market, though, the market action seems to suggest to me that they just really don't care. William Shakespeare says Seth the talking head on Fox Gasparino says Trump is discouraged and if things don't turn around in polling he will just step aside. Yeah, that you know what we call that? We call that propaganda. The chances of Donald Trump quitting the race are like literally zero. Literally zero. And what information does Charlie Gasparino have that says that Donald Trump would uh, just quit? He has absolutely none. It's it's just people, uh, what is the word, speculating, because they don't like him, right? This is what this is, is a bunch of Republicans like Mitt Romney that don't like him are either either saying this because they know that media outlets will pick it up and that it would hurt the president or that it's just wishful thinking on their parts. But the fact that this is even a story is absolutely ridiculous. And I think that any media outlet that's publishing that and pushing that story should be ashamed of themselves because it's not a, it's not a real story. Anyways. Uh, yeah, I mean, that one's not even worth uh, mentioning. It's 
then affect markets. Now, Joe Biden coming out and saying, oh, I'm going to reverse all of the Trump tax cuts. And hey, if he had if he has complete control of the House and the Winston Senate. Winston Smock man. says the Supreme Court decision on the president's taxes is incoming this morning. Oh, is that coming this morning? R.J. Wheel says that's dumb. He might lose presidency, but he's not taking a chance losing his brand. There's there's no chance that he's going to quit. No chance. Oh, Fauci is testifying in the Senate right now. Uh. RJ Wheel says I'd bet Biden steps aside before Trump ever would. <laughs> right. We're we're still sitting here wondering is Joe Biden really going to be the nominee? Like there was that poll from Rasmussen that said that 40% of voters thought that he was what what was the word? It wasn't senile, but how do you become president? 40% of voters think that seems a little, maybe, maybe there's something uh, screwy about that poll too. Cause I just don't think that that's, that William just Shakespeare doesn't says, jive with other like things we're seeing. RJ just Wheel doesn't says jive, challenged. just doesn't jive with the other polling numbers that we've got, is it? But I mean, it's like the funny thing is, is that how would you even do that? Like, think about it. You quit. It's already past the convention or something. Oh, I'm dropping out. Joe Biden can be president. Tenzin Norbu says dement. Like, like seriously. Whoa, whoa, whoa. you're Donald Trump. Okay. It's like, like, like it's, it's, it's September or something. Okay. Let's say it's September. It's September. You're Donald Trump. Hmm. Well, I don't think I'm going to win. I think I should just let Joe Biden be president. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? William Shakespeare says Biden's party is off the rails. The story is just, it boggles the mind of why media carries it. Not just that they carry it, but that they like really pushed the story. That was freaking all, all that anybody was talking about on Reddit yesterday. Oh, that was it. Okay, so we're getting the pullback. And they are not going for 55. William Shakespeare says Trump is pragmatic. Mm, details of Hong Kong national security legislation will be unveiled at 1600 BST. Why would... I thought we already knew what was in it. Okay, that's interesting. Donald Trump tweets, Chuck, we will get lower drug prices done. Thank you. Yeah, unfortunately, they haven't done anything with that. Yeah, I'm seeing a bunch of people. RJ Wheel says if he's losing badly, he LL spent his time working on the base for what he can sell them. Trump Library will have roulette and craps and blackjack. <laughs> yeah, he, there's no way that he would quit. Um, seeing a bunch of people talking about the Lincoln Project. I find that that's another one that I find interesting because I, I really don't think that the messages they put out are, are going to be very effective. But Democrats sure seem to love them. Well, you always you should always be happy when the other party is um, dealing with friendly fire. William Shakespeare says, "If he loses, we're screwed." Okay, so we do have some Fed speakers later. That's not for a whole hour before William. Gary speaks. Rich says, "Yep, crude only point five six of movement, point two three on lower times, too tight." Um. I continue to see a market that they seem to be selling something and the price keeps going up. Bot says good morning all. Oh, good morning, John. How are you?
you know, thinking back on these numbers, one of the things is that consumer confidence is definitely something... Bob says, good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, doing okay. I tried taking some trades today, but the, the positioning and everything is just hasn't been working out for me today. Um, the, the consumer confidence is kind of like, in my mind, like a soft number. Like, it just tells you what people are thinking. Gary Rich says, when price is too tight of a range. I don't want to play gopher and get my head chopped off. And it, it just it seems to be in line with what you'd expect, that, that there seems to be an uh, irrational amount of uh, positivity and confidence in the market right now. And RJ so that shows Eel up says in exactly consumer confidence. Why am trapped up against VWAP? Should the consumer confidence matter more than the Chicago PMI? Uh. I mean, I, I think I understand why the market would move that way, but I don't think in the long run that it necessarily is. They both matter, really. And we're getting different parts of the economy telling us different things still. Okay, Texas hospitalization is down today to 4,739 from 5,713. Texas hospitalization is down 20% of that is not causing a reaction. That is not causing a reaction. Mm. <laughs> Zero hedge. GOP is skeptical of pulling on Trump. The hill, but why? Well, I'll explain it to you. The uh, models were really bad at predicting the election last time. They haven't really changed everything, anything. And you're starting to get really wonky results from like what the party affiliation is. So I think that there's a, a pretty good reason to believe that the polling is not accurate. Doesn't necessarily mean that Donald Trump is ahead right now. Pretty good reason to believe that the polling is inaccurate. Also, pretty good reason to Tenzin believe Norbu that the says, "Great choice the for the way. Americans." I thought there are 350 million people in the U.S. to choose from. Uh, what are you coming out? I don't know what the hell you're talking about, dude. Um, yeah. So we're kind of chopping around in this area. I think that eventually we will get a above 3055 but I, I think this market is just kind of like in the let's William screw Shakespeare everybody says over first, first prayer right Seth let's screw everybody over first is what it looks like it's doing man uh, the treasuries did come down and interesting the treasuries came down gold is moving up Mm, a little bit of dollar weakness, but it's still not really moving. Still not really moving. You see, when they move up, it's pulling. Look at it there. 37 to clear 30.54.25. Well, they just pulled there on the downside too. So do you see they're selling it almost two to one? And it ticks up. Walter Bloomberg tweets OPEC and Russia not yet discussing extending record oil cuts into August will likely ease cuts for OPEC plus sources say. Oil. 
actually need to move this one. Yep, it is. William Shakespeare says when the market tanks the left blames the speculators us, that's how the Frank Dodd Act was born. Yeah, I'm really tempted to, to respond to that and talk about the Dodd-Frank Act, but I don't think that now is the time. I think we've done enough of that ranting today. <laughs> they bring, they re eased some of that stuff earlier this week, and it was really good for the banks. Uh, it wasn't this week. It was last week, wasn't it? Chuck Grassley, retweeted by Donald Trump. Trump should be reelected if for no other reason than he is the first president to challenge China over their unfair trade practices. Hmm. Walmart stopped selling All Lives Matter merchandise following backlash. They had All Lives Matter merchandise at Walmart? What? Gary Rich says, I read the Dodd-Frank bill first before you pontificate on it. I mean, I don't think that anybody's read the whole thing. That's a pretty big piece of legislation, right? But I've read quite a bit about it. There was a lot of really good things in Gary it. Gary Rich says it's like, a very um, complicated bill to understand. The Volcker rule was was a bad call. The Volcker Gary rule Rich was a bad says call. I have. There's a lot of other things in it that were really good. I mean, I think that the financial system is definitely a lot safer now because of the Dodd-Frank Act. But I think that the way that they hamstrung the trading activities of the banks was was a bad call. And and eventually we're going to pay the price. Like if you if you put the market in, if you put monkeys in charge of the market, you know, eventually it's going to add and badly. And and that's what bothers me about it is that some of the the best traders aren't at the banks anymore, and and the banks need those people to make good decisions. So that bothers me. Gary Rich says safer yes if you call zombie banks safer. Welcome to Harry Potter for financials. Florida COVID-19 cases at long-term care facilities hits record. Zombie banks safer? Is Goldman Sachs a zombie bank? Is JP Morgan a zombie bank? City William Shakespeare says first in first out rule and hedging rules suck. So now Gary Citibank would probably be the one that you would call a zombie bank, right? But I, it seems like they've recovered pretty well. Although all of these, that I, one of the problems from the 2008 crisis, is that they're still holding all of these crappy securities, huh? That is a, That has been a rope for Goldman Sachs in particular. That's been a problem. I thought you'd come through for me. Man, every time that it does it, it's just the stops. The stops. That one in particular was really big. They, uh, they based for a William while. William Shakespeare says, yes, derivatives still out there. One of the... Gary Rich says there are no more prop traders for the banks. They are holding companies masking as investments banks. Yeah, they are holding companies. Uh, they're not masking. I mean, Goldman Sachs is straight up a holding company. They, they, the Federal Reserve came in and said, you need to be a holding company. And they rearranged the whole business to do that. Okay. Suggesting to me maybe some more. Sunday Driver says bankers are run by ravenous greedy people. For how long were banks allowed to borrow at zero, buy treasuries with free money, and are still not as financially secure as they should be? Mm. No. Gr humans are ravenous greedy people. It's not just the banks, guys. No, 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 no. Well, this is just the way that people are. And if you go and you create certain incentives for people to do things, you shouldn't be surprised when they end up doing them. Gary Rich says they bullied them into that status or position due to no moral hazard. Yep. Zombie, zombie. 
they well, they Goldman Sachs didn't want to be a holding company. Goldman Sachs liked the fact that they were relatively small and and yet, Sunday driver says I worked you know, at a bank for a decade. The people at the top are a different breed. They they um you know Goldman Sachs used to always be like small but the best. That's what they that's the way that they were viewed and they they viewed themselves. Goldman Sachs cares primarily about reputation. They they drill that into you when you work there. Reputation, reputation, reputation. This is like all that matters. Uh, they did not like very much. What happened to them was was basically the biggest ego hit that they possibly could have had. Because number one, they were no longer small. And then number two, they got hit with all of this reputational, oh, Goldman Sachs, they're the evil ones. Oh, it was devastating to them psychologically. And then, and then they had the second curve level, which was, well, actually, there's been two, two or three since then, right? Because then there was that, uh, what was it Singapore or wherever Malaysia um, fund thing that was a problem, and um, and then there was also uh, Lloyd pushed a strategy, strategy where they pushed into emerging market, um, Vic that uh, just didn't work out at all um and then they've been struggling i think that in the long run they can do really really well but well, lately things haven't been going their way okay well they're coming back to the breakout And test it a little bit. Tenzin Norbu says, Sorry, I am not less greedy or envious. We have turned inside to see our own demons sometimes. Oh, you know what? People people think that that they're not, but that usually just means that you haven't been put in the situation yet. The incentive's just not strong enough. Listen, when you're sitting there in front of your dom <laughs> and and the one that one click. Can, could mean potentially thousands of dollars for you. Um, and then you, you hold it and it doesn't work out. And later on you look and you say, oh yeah, I really shouldn't have done that. That was really dumb. And then maybe you will know. Maybe then you will actually know yourself. And every trader does it. Every trader does it. This idea for some reason that we all think there were... Per particularly more virtuous or better than other people is is uh it's just not true winston's mom says goldman sachs created a font but you are forbidden by its license to critique goldman sachs tech dirt podcast well, what is the font <laughs> is the name of the font a gary rich says bring back glass steagall and sarbanes oxley it will help nah. rip paul volker i think i think that glass steagall is dumb I, it was not, I mean, listen, the glass steagall is not what caused the financial crisis. All glass steagall does is prevent the banks from being competitive with foreign banks. Some of, some of, like, it, the issue is, well, I mean, it's kind of a crappy issue. Is it? Like, like, if you could in enforce banking regulations worldwide, then maybe Gary it would Rich be a different says it was issue. stripped away. Maybe it would be a different issue, but the way that it is right now, a lot of the restrictions that they would like to put on banks would would be uh, devastating to their competitiveness. Do you want all of the world finance to happen in Singapore? Because that's kind of the way the where it would go if they implement some of these changes that people want, especially like a financial transaction tax. Ugh. Man, if there there was a tax, financial transaction tax on futures that substantially increased the commissions would be so bad. Would could possibly be enough. Winston's to mom says Goldman Sachs. Industry. Anyways. Well they they came back to the scene of the crime. The push back down was actually quite extensive. They're still pushing up, and the upside targets are still up at 3070. 
Julian Farrell's $1,000 haircut returns with a 1,200-person waiting list. I've never heard of that before. RJ Wheel says President Ocasio will put that in in 2044. <laughs> Winston's mom says didn't link the font. The only, the, the only way that Ocasio-Cortez ever gets that high in politics is if there's a communist revolution and she becomes the new leader of the Communist Party. That's the only way that she stands a chance at ever being more than a House representative. <laughs> William Shakespeare says Biden party will tear down Wall Street if it falls. Wow, they wouldn't tear down Wall Street, but they would Gary do Rich some says things. Seth, here's a test. Who stripped away those two acts? Glass and Sarbanes. Well, that was all pushed back um, during the Bush years, if I recall correctly. Some of the, some of that stuff happened at the end of the Clinton years, but I was really was Bush when I think that they got rid of uh, Winston's Glass mom Steagall says R.J. Wheel. She's not old enough yet. And there were certain reasons for why they were doing it, but I I, I just think that it's. Uh, I think it's a distraction. R.J. Wheel says like, in 2044. Why, why did the housing crisis happen? The housing crisis happened because the government created incentives to put people into houses and created a housing bubble. That's why the financial crisis happened. Okay, Let's understand the financial crisis was the housing bubble was a government created bubble. Okay, all of these other things that were attached to it, like, you know, derivatives, they all say, oh, we need to get rid of derivatives. No, you have to be able to hedge against things. Okay, so guess what? Goldman Sachs, they have this system that allows them to see exactly what their exposure is on things, and they use that to determine their exposure to the housing market and hedge themselves against it. Hey, that's the way that the market is supposed to work. And they come in and say, oh, well, because Goldman Sachs hedged themselves out like they're broke, that's just absolutely silly. Many of these things that people have been pushing in the wake of the financial crisis are just frankly insane. And, and the one that I think is really the craziest is when they say that, that we should get rid of these um, derivatives trading or these credit swaps. So, like These are instruments that, that people need to be able to hedge themselves against risk. But what, what is the real problem here? The real problem here is government-created bubbles. The, the uh, Glass-Steagall, the removal of Glass-Steagall did not create the financial crisis. The companies that everybody's getting after, okay, Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, all these, all these companies, they were corporate banks and were never under Glass-Steagall to begin with. The only ones, the only ones that that applied to was Citibank. So. And then, of course, what did they do? They came in and they made all of those companies become bank holding companies anyway. <laughs> it's like, come on. Winston's mom says, sorry, I read that as 2024. Gary Rich says Bill Clinton, Rubin, Summers and Greenspan stripped away regulations. We got the results in 07 to 09. William Shakespeare says AOC did very well in last election and the people she supported in New York crazy. Gary Rich says it allowed banks to lever up, man. Read the regulations. Well, so the Glass-Steagall doesn't necessarily allow banks to lever up, right? We have basal regulations to uh, prevent uh, excessive risk-taking, which is a different issue because even though basal regulations are good, that also kind of creates a situation where everybody has the same holdings and that's kind of a problem too but wrong tool banks banks need to be able to do a prop proprietary trading for themselves if if only for the reason that they need to have people that actually know what's going on gary rich says ah shit don't get me start on basel 3 yeah, you know, I don't know the very much about the details of Basel III, but I've always, I'd always concerned me that we basically came in and said, "Here's, here's a certain way in which you're allowed to have holdings if you're a bank," and it basically set it up in a way that all of the banks ended up buying the same stuff. That really concerns me. 
because I don't think that the too big to fail problem was gone. Like here's the thing that the banking sector is so much stronger than it was, but that doesn't mean it's invulnerable. It never will be right. I mean, you get away from this idea that we just can't let bad things happen. Like sometimes businesses and things need to fail. And sometimes we go through hard times because the alternative is kicking the root can down the road just makes the situation worse so that when it blows up, 10 years later, it's worse, right? Think about it. If, if we had just let things fail, maybe we would have had a protracted financial crisis with a strong recovery at the end, but then we would have been in a more positive financial situation at the end of that. And so then when this coronavirus thing hit, it, the debt wouldn't be so crushing, you know? And now that we're kicking the can down the road this time, what's, what's going to happen in, in another 10 years, you know? Well, this market continues to be see a lot of selling. I'm wondering if, you know, that could be that end of month flow that, that people were concerned about. So that we are seeing the selling. But the selling is not really making significant headways on the downside either the longs continue to to get it and then when it goes and breaks a new high you get tons of stops now that 3055 is not ended up being useful at all so kind of in an area where the technicals don't seem to be helping at all Hmm, what's this? I want to see this thread. Over the past weeks, a substantial amount of new evidence has become available about immunity to SARS-CoV-2. This information can be difficult to process and integrate. As such, I felt it may be helpful to write a thread to summarize the information and provide some context. The immune system is highly complex and comprises a series of different arms. Innate immunity represents mostly first-line responses with no memory of prior infections. Acquired immunity can be broken down into antibody-mediated and T-cell-mediated immunity. Antibody-mediated mu immunity is based on B lymphocytes that are reactivated to produce antibodies when exposed to a pathogenic reinfection. Until recently, all the attention in the SARS debate coronavirus debate has been on antibodies. Uh, there's 13 of these. Antibodies are fairly easy to quantify, which is the basis of serological tests that inform whether someone has been infected, though it is becoming apparent that not everyone infected mouse detectable levels of antibodies. They wane very quickly, as such antibody tests can fail to detect prior infection in particular for asymptomatic or mild infections. Okay. I'm just going to read some of this quietly now. Gary Rich says, dude, our debt just hit 26 trillion. By the end of Sept, we will have 28 trillion. Oh, yeah. I don't know what happens with that. Finish on a lighter note, given how little we still know about the best studied virus ever, it amuses me to no end that some believe it might have been cunningly engineered by Tenzin Norbu office. says separation yeah, between state and economy, then free the price of money. We could live with smaller booms and busts in a natural market. No. You need the... You, so the problem with um, the monetary system as it exists today is Gary that, Rich says, "Get ready for financial repression for the next decade." Yeah. Is that it, uh, it? It bubbles are created naturally, right? Uh, and the reason that they're created naturally is because of this feedback effect, where when when you start buying something and it goes up, and then you go to tell all your friends that you bought this thing and you made money, and so then they all go out and they start doing it, and and that creates bubbles. These boom and bust cycles are natural, inherent function of markets that is 
is uh, created by nature, really. Um, and so when you have a bust, you have to have something that's counter-cyclical. The only way that you can have something that's counter-cyclical is if it's controlled by a body like a Federal Reserve. If you had let interest rates float, they wouldn't, they wouldn't be an effective hedge anymore. So you have to have something that's counter-cyclical. So having a Federal Reserve that is able to step in, and even a powerful Federal Reserve that can come in and say, hey, we need to do something crazy, like buy corporate bonds, even though I don't think they should be doing that. But the ability for somebody to come in and say, hey, that's, that's a good thing for the financial system overall. The issue is not the Federal Reserve. The issue is that the Federal Reserve is, is uh, become myopic, right? They've made some decisions that in the short term make a lot of sense and they are completely, all of their incentives are to do that thing because that's their job. But in the long run, they're very negative for the markets. And Gary is right. We're gonna we're going to end up where you have this um really big boom. And quite frankly, it may already be over. I don't know if we're ever gonna go back and see those lows again, but what you're gonna get instead is you're gonna get this market that just goes sideways for 10 years. Right? It'll go sideways or or if we do get um higher, it'll be from inflation. But uh, there's no inflation in sight, so I, I highly doubt that one. So it's a real problem. I think Gary's right. We're we're gonna have we're gonna be like Japan was, right? It's just gonna go sideways. You're gonna have this high that was produced that that they can just never reach. And while there are some Things that make us different from Japan, in particular being a reserve currency and things like that. The, the larger issue is still that you have all of these people that have bought into companies and have put money William at Shakespeare work. Shakespeare says yes, Japan. Put money at work in the markets, overpaying for, um, for earnings, essentially. So the potential upside, just based off of the, high, the overly high valuations means that our upside is limited. Watch out for fixing flows into the top of the hours as Forex Live. What are we talking about? So there are two trades around fixing. Go with the move you see 10 to 15 minutes before the fix. Fade any outside moves after the turn of the hour. There's another option as well. Stay away from the market at quarter end, but you're here now, so dot, dot, dot. The theme so far today has been dollar selling. What are currency fixings and how do they work? Okay. A preset time of day when bids and offers are aggregated and cleared at a published price. Popular, popular fixings are the Tokyo fixing at 050 GMT and the ECB fix at 1215 GMT and the London fixing at 1600. Most of the volume at fixings is generated by asset managers. Does this happen every day? Most important one being at 4 p.m. when. So for GMT to um, MST is 10. 10, so it's not that one. Gary Rich says yes, that occurs every day. Do I have, maybe I'm off because of uh, daylight savings time? What is it? It says that it's 2.45 there right now. But is London on GMT? London is on time. London time. Uh, they are GMT plus one. So it is in 15 minutes, the London fix happens every day at nine o'clock. Interesting. 
And as we've been seeing, Euro has been rising. William Shakespeare says debt a joke, it's a fiat currency. Get the world printing money then in the end forgive each other debt. Start from scratch. Is that what's going to happen is that all everybody's just going to say, okay, I will forgive all of your debt if you forgive all of my debt. And then it's we're RJ all even. RJ Wheel says the big problem to growth in this decade is there will be more retirees than consumers. Well, yeah, that's another issue. Mm, on the other hand, though, it's it'll be good that um, you should, in the end, have more resources per person when all these people retire. It should be good. Okay, there's a good little push. They did make a new high, but not by much. And it crashed against that wall. There's some some bigger orders at 3060. Hmm, I don't know. It'll show it as to me as like a yellow, but then I look at it and it's like 223. Doesn't mean much at all. RJ Wheel says China's one child policy is starting to bite back. Oh, um, yeah. I think the, the way that, that it's biting back is more cultural than anything, though. Mm, data on vaccine effectiveness may be available sometime in winter or the early part of next year. Well, okay. that's, that's too long for my liking, but. Those those last little moves we did get some some better cumulative. R. J. Wheel says gangbangs are up. William Shakespeare says first agree what is wrong with a smaller population. Overall, though, we're still selling. Gary Rich says Harley Bassman says the real unhinge between bonds and equities will come in 2023 to 2025. 2025 or so the millennials will have to carry the load. Like how the boomers lead it for 30 years. Hmm, 2023. What's special about 2023? Is that just when, um, well, unhinged between bonds and equities? Donald Trump tweets the lone warrior. No clue what that what that's about. Whatever. Facebook nerfs newsfeed will prioritize original reporting to most stories by anonymous authors. How about we just like um not promote news stories? Here's an idea. William Shakespeare says, Set this is the voice I am tired you don't pay me enough. You know what? If you want to, if you have a problem with it, go and talk to Google. And while you're at it, tell them to fix their live streaming API so that we get more requests per day. RJ Wheel says retirees aren't investors. The crunch will come from that. Money going out no longer coming in. So there's, you're saying that that is a point at which uh, enough people are retiring that it will Gary Rich says when the inflows. boomers start to get out of equities to diverse to more bonds. Gotcha. Gold hits 1780. Gold is definitely moving, by the way. And I mean, definitely moving. Can you see there in the upper left? Definitely moving. Shall we? Gold is not so, or sorry, oil is not so interesting at the moment. And do we have GC? Yes, we do.
RJ Wheel says this is biggest reason stocks up in an unprecedented growth cycle. Well, I think that the millennials have been under invested for a long time and are trying to catch up. I'm just concerned that what's going to happen is we're going to go sideways and they're just going to dice themselves. To bits. Gary Rich says remember in retirement acts at age 72 or 74 one has to take mandatory distributions. What a scam for savers. William Shakespeare says Seth this is the voice I am not getting any younger. You're a computer what do you care? <laughs> you know if you type um, exclamation point info you can switch the voice and use different voices if you know and then she could get a rest oh man look at that so there you're getting lots of circles but that might just be because i reset it you know Ooh, look at him go so how badly did i screw up on those earlier trades Ugh. pretty badly Pretty badly. Now this is going. Is there some news here? For coronavirus cases rise four spot two percent versus a seven day average of five spot spot six. Okay. So um I think I'm gonna right here. I'm gonna take my profits. So this bothers me because because one you're getting a really strong push there so i wanted to take profits at least on half of it i still would like to see the th <laughs> dude like my brain is going i don't know what my deal is i i think it's it's just my chemicals are maybe so a little messed up after my sister dying and all that stuff but i keep slurring my words Anyways, so Monday and Tuesday, oh, there she, she's tuckered out. Look, there's no more requests. Um, the, the, the market, so last week, let, let's go back to this. Let's go back to this a couple of weeks ago. Ooh, how do I show this? Uh, you're just going to have to, to imagine it in your mind. Three weeks ago, we started getting cases from coronavirus that was concerning to the market, particularly Wednesday, Thursday, Friday numbers. The next week, which was last week, we got to Monday and Tuesday, and those numbers tend to be the lowest numbers for the week. And so the market didn't react to those numbers. And then, um, so they didn't, remark, they didn't react Monday, Tuesday. And then we came back in, and Thursday, Friday in particular, the markets reacted a ton to those coronavirus cases and we had some really negative days now we're moving back up and we're back to monday tuesday and this time around they're reacting to the case numbers so even though these are the monday and tuesday numbers and those tend to be the lowest numbers for the week and always tend to be lower than the average number of cases the market is still buying up on them so it's like some robot is caught on to it and has decided that it matters or something. There's 1,800 in gold. Gold is just killing it. Then where does that put them on a, like a longer term? That's This is all-time highs for them, isn't it? Let's see. They were, then they started out this session with a little bit of a sell. And the, the, the on the 24th was a really bad day for them, too. But curious that this is on a day when the equity market seems to just be like, you can't keep it down, you know? Didn't I say to buy gold, I'm making money like crazy and gold have been? Yeah, but I don't know. From, from a scalping perspective, gold doesn't look very attractive to me, that's all. From a scalping perspective, it's not not very attractive can we get more levels to show up in here some of the instruments they'll allow more i don't say i have it the depth to be a hundred 
but it's not showing me more than 10. Yeah, come back and look at this volume profile in gold. Right. Look at some of these moves. At, at like some of the most inopportune times, gold was actually selling. So from a trading perspective and like from a hedging perspective, it seems like gold isn't very good. But from a long term, from a long term uh, investment perspective, it seems like gold is like the place to be right now. Okay, well, we made a lot more on that long than we lost on the shorts, but we really fought it way more than we should have. It was a good five points, ten points there that could have avoided. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven points. And then we ended up getting almost uh, 16 off of it, off of this one, and we doubled up on it. So it all came out fine. Your miners are up 500%. Wow. What kind of money management do you use? Well, so mostly I just focus on putting as much money as I can into my 401k right now. And I do have a small little portfolio of stocks that you know i will try and buy things when stuff is low um and i use primarily fundamental analysis for it and what i do here for trading is i consider to be mostly a hobby um because i know that with the amount of information that i have it's very difficult to become successful at this but i love i love doing it and keep trying so um that's the way that we uh, we do it, but I don't put a whole lot of capital at risk. Igor says having a too fast stop. William says, thanks for being transparent. Yeah, well, I try. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the thing that I um, seems to make me different, this was never like something that I sat down and I said, okay, I'm going to do my stream. And like the stream just kind of happened. This is kind of funny how it happened. It's just like, um, oh, I'm going to do a video journal so I can keep track of my trades. And then you people just keep coming back. I love you so much. Yeah, I don't want it to be like, oh, why, why don't you guys stop wa watching so that I can just quit doing the stream? No, that would, I would hate that. I love the stream so much. Um, but that was kind of how it happened. I didn't intend it to turn into a thing or to build a community out of it or anything. But I, I, I seem to, I spent a lot of time with the online communities and like learning about that sort of stuff. And I think I've done an okay job with it. Sometimes it's hard, but I think I've done an okay job with it. And, uh, but. So I'm just me being me. But the thing that people seem to have caught on is that, that I'm considered honest, right? I don't come in and tell you, oh, yes, yeah, you all should trade futures because that's where the money is at. And if you buy my indicators and use my strategy, all of you can be profitable. I've been honest with people from the beginning to say that, hey, 90%, 5% of people have lost to doing this. 
I've lost some money doing this. I've had good periods, but I've also lost money, lost money at the beginning of the year. And I've been holding back since then, you know, this is just the way that it is. If you're going to be in this, if you're going to do in this for the long haul, you can't lie to yourself about that stuff because that's just going to cause you to, uh, try too hard and lose more money than you can afford to lose. Um, and, and I'm also very contrarian. So I'm also coming in and saying things like, well, you know, the majority of technical analysis doesn't really do anything for you. I find it interesting the way this moves. If I come back and look at my stats, some of these, the MFU was really small. That first short was good. That first short trade I'm, I'm okay with. But the rest of them, nothing ever really worked out. And I kept saying, oh, it must be the bad spot. But I think it was more than the bad spot. It was just the wrong direction. The, the market did not really care about the fundamental news from the PMI or, or frankly, from the uh, consumer sentiment numbers. It looks to me like this market is being driven primarily by coronavirus case numbers that aren't really important at the moment and technicals, right? Oops. We had this bounce off of the 3000 level. They consider that to be a technical signal to go higher and they're buying it. And they're even buying it into what is supposed to be end of month selling. Now, when I look at the cumulative delta, here's a chart of just with the cumulative delta for us. And we can see that there was a lot of selling, but that last one, they finally squeezed them all out. I think it's really likely that we will see 3070 today and maybe even higher. Um, target number two would be Target number two is Yeah, so I'm wondering maybe all of that end of month selling that everybody was worried about is pro has already come through. I'm gonna type some things in Discord. I don't know. Are we seeing for us to get back to 3100 and and the move in B mini has been quite strong. Move back to 3100 would be an impressive feat. Still wouldn't undo all of the damage from uh Thursday and Friday of last week. Monday, Tuesday, Friday, Thursday. Well, really Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, huh? So where did I get out? I really could have held it. 64. 
So I lost, left six points on the table. I think I'm okay with it, though. They're so close to the 70 now, I think that they're going to get it. There's always pullbacks, but pretty likely to go and get it today. I'm wondering how much they can go, though. You know what I mean? Like, the way that it's trading today looks like the way they set themselves up the first time before we dropped big, you know? Like, kind of reckless buying. I'm getting out of ES. Going to wait when Powell testifies to Congress looking to short its recent high. This looks like a front run before he testifies. Yeah, you know, that might be a good point too, Gary. Because... The market generally liked what he was saying yesterday, and I think they would expect him to come in and try and say good things. Uh, I think there's a lot of things going on with the news that, you know, justifies them buying it. I'm just not so sure. I, just, I think I'm kind of, you and I are kind of thinking the same. I, I hope that I'm not influencing you. It just seems to me like they're a little bit too anxious to buy it, you know? Like, I think that for the day at 3070, a little higher than 3070 because they do tend to go through it a little bit. Well, I think that's just a fine spot. Uh, just, just a fine spot to get, and that would be a, a good update. But with the amount of momentum that they have traded on the upside in the in the e mini suggests that they could even go and take out the number two target at 3100 and that would just be a crazy but i guess powell could say something that could move them there and then the the back on in on the back of all of this well so so euro strength dollar weakness is definitely going to push the indexes up so that's helping too but the gold moving up to 1800 that's I, I just don't think that that's good. I'm thinking back now to 2008, and I remember a similar sort of a thing happening where indexes would move up, a uh, dollar would weaken, and gold would move up. And I remember people being concerned about it, but it, nothing ever came of it. And eventually gold, people lost interest in gold, and gold collapsed. There is a dislocation between the bad economic news and markets bidding this up. Of course, it's Fed-induced, so I do see that. Well, so tell me this. What was the bad economic news? It was the Chicago PMI. Do you feel that the Chicago PMI is so important and that the number was so bad that it would justify countering out the rest of this? Like... I don't know, but you're right. It's going up too fast for sure, for sure, man. So watching gold down in there is like really hard because look at the, uh, there's bubbles everywhere because it's so thin. It does like building runway gearway. Yeah, bots has thirty sixty nine fifty. I'm pretty confident they'll touch seventy, but yeah, they went right to it. And again, when they fill the target, they usually go through it. I've seen it many times that they will come close and pull back, but when they come close to it, they they almost always go through it. Well, with the the, the momentum, I don't see why they couldn't get up thirty one hundred because that's target number two is thirty one hundred. But that's a lot less likely, and I don't think that the news at the moment justifies the 3,100. Especially since, well, 
Mm. So, so one of the things, an assumption in my backdrop view, that the backdrop of my view, is that the coronavirus case numbers from Monday and Tuesday don't really matter. But especially with the decrease in hospitalizations in Texas, there is a hint that this second wave that we've all been worrying about is not really a serious concern. And that would definitely be bullish for markets and at the very least would allow them to retrace this this small bear run that we've had, right? So that could be part of it. Well, it's time for me to take a break. So I'm going to go get some more water and I'll be right back, all right? see here what scary say here this move is a playing out almost what i thought last year v-shape my butt it's more like a square root with a slanted side except the nasdaq that's a different animal you know buying the spy at the close and selling at the open you'd be up well that's that trade has actually been changing recently <coughs> mm. Corona heard that trade. Yeah. Oh, he was saying that. Yeah. I don't know. That's exactly one of those things. You know, I've been thinking a lot about, um, uh, we've been talking about technical analysis. We talked a lot about technical analysis yesterday and I was thinking about it. I was like, what are indicators that don't actually rely on past data to do it? I can't, Think of any. Even like cumulative data, you need past bars, right? It have to be something that you can only use the data from this current time to show. And what is that? Level like level two? That's like it. That's the only thing that doesn't incorporate past data. I think that the problems with technical data is more than just incorporating past data. I think that it's also that 
Um, even though there can be patterns in the markets that uh, that it, you're just seeing kind of the the tiny oscillations on a larger backdrop that that make whatever you're seeing kind of irrelevant in the larger picture. But um, yeah, I was I was kind of thinking about that because like this this whole thing that like here's a strategy that has worked over a certain historical time period that to me is like the quintessential here's technical analysis and why it doesn't work because there's certain reasons why the markets have moved the way that they have in that time frame okay a lot of the world growth and the growth that companies have seen have been because of growth in china and so the asian markets move up and yeah it makes a lot of sense that during the asian markets would be when a lot of the growth happens. Well, there's a one theory for you. Speaking on indicators, Los Angeles mayor said that COVID death rates are a lagging indicator, FYI. Um, well, yes. I, I mean, really, they're the indicator that we care about, aren't they? Well, no, I don't think so. Uh, for us. Depends on who us is. For trading, for trading, the number that really matters is the hospital, the uh, hospital capacity. So, for instance, in Texas, for them to have, you know, changed like twenty percent when we they were all closing things down and everything, is a very positive development because when you have build your hospital capacity that's when it's like you have to you have to close things down and that's what hurts the markets um but when we're talking from a government policy perspective the number that really matters is the death rate right the the deaths per confirmed case um the lower it is the more effective your response was essentially and uh, there's a couple of different ways you can look at it per capita, per thousand people, that sort of thing, too. I need to blow my nose. I don't know what the deal is. So Gary says, if the Great British Pound gets to 1.2, look to hit that short, it's moving up on Brexit negotiations? Well, it's probably also moving up just on the overall dollar weakness too, right? Okay, so there's 30.70. So we've hit the target. already past the quote-unquote fixing flows although gold continues to move okay, I'm gonna keep that one up <laughs> elbow arthroscopy what do you call them Governor adds eight more states to quarantine requirement. So if you come from a certain state, you have to be quarantined first. Mm, zero hedge. Coronavirus cases versus fatality. Why the next six days will be crucial. Oh, so they're probably pointing out that, that if deaths are going to come from the most recent spat of cases, that we're going to see it in the next six days. That's probably true. Okay, so we are getting stuff from Williams now. Fed Williams says recovery will likely take years. Although this improvement is welcome, the economy is still far from healthy and full recovery will take years to achieve. Great British Pound is moving up pretty strong. New York sees 13 deaths. Okay. Okay, 13. Woohoo. 
Um, Fed keeps options open on yield caps, but looks to other tools first, says the Wall Street Journal's officials aren't in a hurry to announce plans on a possible strategy to cap yields with unlimited short-term securities purchases. Well, can you imagine to keep the yield curve under control how much they would have to buy? Ugh. And that would just, like, the treasuries are already pretty dull. But now you can't even make money from spreading it? Like, it would just totally kill them. It would be like the Fed would be the only ones buying it at that point. <laughs> mm, Arizona coronavirus cases rise record 400. 4,682, uh, but a lab didn't report some cases yesterday and were folded into today. Okay, the Pentagon sent a note to lawmakers saying it did not find the allegations of Russian bounties quote-unquote credible, and a lawmaker is now reporting. Mm, Dems hit Trump over handling of Russian bounty and allegations after White House briefing. Okay. So uh, that looks like that that story is starting to look like a dud. Especially if the Pentagon is sending a note to lawmakers that they're basically like saying, like, no, no, you, you guys have it wrong. It's like, stop. Just stop. Okay, so now that we're at 3070, they did push a little bit further. It wasn't too dramatic. I think that we could see a pullback here. I mean, th that tendency is that after we hit the target that there is a pullback. I think we should still keep in mind that 3100 area, even though um, it's not likely. Uh, it's certainly with a possibility at this point. It is certainly a possibility. So hmm. cases more than double in June in at least ten states, including Florida and Texas. Feds Williams, the Fed is there and ready with facilities up and running if financial conditions worsen. Fauci says he never said we can't play a certain sport. Oh, so we can have basketball again? I'm not sure if I care anymore. But... And look at that. That gold just... The market here tweets, wave of corporate failures stays at bay for now. Some on Wall Street are starting to wonder if the anticipated crush of corporate failures will ever arrive. Meanwhile, market here also says the VIX remains stressed. Hmm. Well, William says that he was in on the pound. You know, and there's Ace. Really should have held for the 70, but... Eh. I'm wondering, when we were back here... Uh, we'd really have to go to more like 745, right? There was the news. It was the one they stopped us all out, and that was sucky. Hmm. So maybe here? Yeah, 46. Would have been a good one. 
I took it at 51. So I took it right here. I took it somewhere around here, I think. Actually, I think it was even earlier than that. Yeah, I think it was. I think it was in here. That one actually wasn't too bad. Plus the... Um, Oh, it went 14 against me? Really? Wait, how is that? Huh. So it really went against me and I then never got stopped out? I don't know. Well, I don't remember that. It must have been really dramatic and I just, you know, forgot it. Mm -mm. You're up 1500 on F SPXL. Oh, along on the SPX. Well, I don't know. I always, I always take the uh, the implied volatility targets. So. New York governor orders people arriving from eight additional states to quarantine for 14 days amid coronavirus pandemic. I bet you that I couldn't go to New York right now. Feds Williams says yield curve control is viewed as a way to support forward guidance. We don't need to use negative rates in the U.S. for corona for the circumstances we are in, says the Feds Williams. He's saying a ton of stuff. Well, at the top of the hour, I think it is. Yeah, no, actually, in about an hour, we will get the uh, Fed chairman will be speaking. Probably he's going to want to say some positive things. Um, I don't know. I'm starting to see today some of the um, bear case falling apart, don't you think? The only the only thing is is that the multiples are still too high. So Rice got hammer gap, I guess Uncle Ben caused it. What's that? Well, This morning has been up, 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 no pullback whatsoever. Crazy. I think I think one of the things that's happening is that there was a lot, people were expecting a lot of selling and it's not materializing and that's causing a panic bid. Oh, rough rife futures. Uncle Ben. Are we talking about Ben Carson or are we talking about the company or that the product Uncle Ben's rice. Because they've, he's been canceled. Uncle Ben has been canceled. Is that what it is? Now, since when did was that uh, um, light shining off of my cabinet like that? We can fix that. That's better. Don't tell Aunt you know who. <laughs> I've been noticing lately that when London leaves, it's time to end trading, Lewis. Yeah. The volatility and opportunity in the market, especially in treasuries, but even in equities as well, 
significantly diminishes when the London traders are gone. No question about it. Now, today we've got the chairman speaking. So, you know, I don't really know. There might still be some moves. I, I'm still really skeptical about them getting to 3,100 today, but I really, I really shouldn't. I'm really not willing to step in front of that. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's one that's it was like, if they start moving up, I'm not going to short it. No way. No way. No way. <laughs> so, um, but the probability is that that was, they hit a good spot. I mean, they'll just kind of range and distribute. Now, how is the volume profile going on here today? In terms of like how much we traded. Okay. Well, we traded a lot in the 3047 area to 3054 area. Mm, and then at the end of the 3054 area, and now we got 64 or 68. Mm, so I don't see a super crazy distribution. So that that still kind of suggests that they're not that well. Let's just say that somebody is not trying to flip it around or anything. They're not like distributing and uh, you know setting up for a possible turn or anything like that. It's just kind of normal trading distribution. Mm, I'm going to be interested to see some of the metrics and stuff that we see at the end of the day. Like how much, how did Robinhood participate in this, and which which companies went up and stuff. I think that's going to matter because. I don't know, this up move looked really reckless, but at the same time, at the end of the day, coming into this week, I was very bearish. And now I feel like that a lot of their bearish arguments not there. Like, company defaults probably aren't going to come. Um, there has been a rise in coronavirus cases, but it looks like the states are able to handle it. And that even if they do have to shut down small parts, that it's not having a significant impact on the economy. The only thing is just like I still wouldn't buy stocks unless they were giving a good multiple. So probably you're going to get a lot of like retail chasing on this move. I suspect so we could come back and see it. It looks like they have turned. Like I finally got it. Average true range stop out. And they're coming down to the moving average at 3065. So we may be able to see, yeah, there they 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 plunged through it. And so I think it's safe to say that we saw a change in uh, trend. Fact, we're getting a negative trend now. Look at that RSI. Look at that CCI in the upper right. Like positive almost the whole way, starting almost right from the open. Just that little bit when the news came in from the PMI, and then other than that. It's been almost nothing but but bullish the whole day. Now they're taking profits. Yeah, it's coming back. So here, one of these is one of the things that I notice happens a lot, especially when it's a retail trader driven rally, <laughs> is that most retail traders don't really have an, an idea of where they expect it to go. Because they're not aware of things like implied volatility from the VIX and stuff. And so they're kind of more waiting for it. You know, they're like they're trailing it, right? They're waiting, oh, it's come down so much, and then you sell. But then it turns into this like who sells first sort of a thing, right? If you didn't catch the distribution at the top. And I think that what we just saw there in the E-mini was that. <laughs> was the the panic take profits. And when you look at the cumulative belt over here, turning back down, I bet you, though, that it comes out equal. Okay, well, I am past my time.
Uh, we did okay today. I don't like those first trades and, you know, first day actually taking a trade. Um, I do think that if we were trading it back again, I did those on experiment, but if it wasn't for that, that other stuff, we'll do experiment the rest of the week. And then maybe next week we can go back to the serious one. Um, but I think that today would have been a day to trade the serious ones. And I think tomorrow probably could be too. What do we have on the docket to, for tomorrow? I'm pretty sure that we've got um, some stuff, right? ISM manufacturing, final manufacturing, ADP non-farm employment change, construction spending. So we still got some. Oh, and then we've got the Fed meeting minutes tomorrow as well. <laughs> and then let's see here. Thursday. Oh, that's right. Because Friday is a bank holiday because the 4th of July is on Saturday. And therefore, average hourly earnings in non-farm and the unemployment rate are all going to happen on the second. Now, that that one, given the whole, what is, man, that just seems like just yesterday. That whole drama over the unemployment number for June. So that July unemployment number is going to be a big deal. East Trade says, what makes you think it will go to 3100 So. What I'm looking at, Ace, is just based on the, the implied volatility. Target number one is 3070. And on most days, we're going to go to target number one, and then that's the end of the action. And that's what we're seeing at the moment. But the way that they moved up into this was extremely aggressive and fast and really trendy. I mean, like they sold it hard in the futures, in the e mini futures. There was a lot of selling. And it just ignored them and went up. Um, I think that some of this selling flow that people were expecting to come in didn't come in because they did it all on Friday. That was probably why Friday was as kind of went the way that it did. Um, so I think there's a bit of a panic bid. But the whole thing is, is that there's just so much trend that we can't discount the, the possibility of a trend day. So if they really decide that they're going to continue to go... Like, let's say that, that, that the chairman's testimony here um, in an hour ends up being really bullish for markets. Then 3,100 would be the area that we would be looking for it to go. Yeah, Gary, 3,100 is a tough wish. It is. It is. Like, it's really, like, understand that they're going to touch that number maybe 30% of the time. It's not, it's not a common one. So... The, the probabilities are, well, the historical probability is that we're done based on implied volatility. So based on what the VIX opened at today and what the E-mini opened at today and how far you can expect the index to go based off of that on average. So but that's why I'm saying it's, I can't say that it, it's going to do it or not. I'm just saying if if another wave came in and they said that, oh, we're going to continue to buy up, then 3,100 would be like the area that I would be most interested in. But as it is right now, it kind of looks like it's over, right? He says, I just want my two points. I don't know, dude. Um, oh, wow, the treasuries got killed. I didn't even realize. Now that treasuries got killed. Um, they are amazing targets. Like it's not just like your average technical levels. They are very much like something always happens there. It's consistent every day. It matters, and when it doesn't matter, you get an inside day. So it's. At the very least, a very good way to judge how far we're moving. I can't tell you which one they're going to go, if they're going to go to the one up or the one down, but 3084, they are going to rate up there and whip it back. You think so? How do you come up with those, Gary? Well, i tell you what. Let's wait and see if it happens. If it happens, then we, I'll ask you about it tomorrow. Simulation showed that wearing a plastic face shield reduced the inhalation of droplets 
from a cough by 96%, significantly protecting their wear. Oh, a face mask. <laughs> a face shield. Well, that's maybe one thing. So if you cough, you just go on to the... Yeah. yeah. So the treasury is getting killed now is... significant to me. Because we saw them holding such a strong bid. But it seems to me that for whatever reason that they were having, that they were buying them up for, it's done and over with. There's nothing holding them up anymore. Yeah. Because when they turned back down, the five year stacked on top of it. Would have been a good trade, too. Uh... Okay, yeah, I should get going. I will see you guys tomorrow. Um, remember, remember, uh, Chairman is going to be speaking, so stay frosty. In the meantime, stay profitable, friends. Oh, you know what? I say that, and then we need to we need to title this somehow. Mm -mm. I'm just going to say market struck off bad PMI because that was the thing that like I'm going to remember is that the PMI was bad and then, you know, it died. Can I use your sign off? Sure, you can. I'm not I'm not the most interesting trader in the world, but maybe together, maybe we could possibly be the, the most interesting. <laughs> Stay profitable, friend.